Your father and I have spoken about your fiancé, Mary. We believe he'll be an honorable husband for you. We'll set a date for the marriage, then. That way, I'm sure one of my children will give me grandchildren. I understand your thirst for knowledge, Jonathan. And your father and I are proud of it. But you are not that young anymore, my son. When will I meet your soulmate? You can ascribe my romantic tendencies to my French origins if you want, Aubrey. But I'll never cease to believe in a match made in heaven, my beloved. I really wish you could meet her mother. You would love her. It's locked. Mother, good evening. Jonathan, is it you? Where have you been, my prodigal son? I'm right here, mother. I'm finally home. Yes, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now found. But where is your sister? Where is Mary? Mary? She... She is gone, Mother. I know she's gone. The question is, when will she return as you have? I miss my grandson so much. It's been days since their last visit. Do you need my medical attention, Mother? I'm all right, son. Don't worry about me. Mother, do you know what's been going on in this area? Not really. I don't go out much due to the epidemic, and when I do, I tend to get lost. What do you mean, you get lost? I hope you don't go outside alone. Of course not. When I go out, your father always comes with me, but he leaves me there sometimes, and I have trouble finding the way back. Have you returned to Whitechapel Cemetery since Mary's funeral? I never want to go back to that awful place. Wait. I think I went back once. And you were there too. And Mary? No, that can't be true. It was just a bad dream, Mother. A nightmare, yes. Mary was so angry. I walked back home alone. If that kind policeman had not called Avery from the station, I don't know what would have happened. Do you need anything, Mother? Can I help you? I just want you to stay with me, Jonathan. Your room is ready. I asked Avery to make your bed. I'll stay as long as I can, I promise. Do you need anything else? Just one thing. Stop staring at me like that. As much as I love you, it breaks my heart to look at those empty and dead eyes. Are you working on a new painting? Not recently. I have trouble focusing on my subject and my mind quickly drifts. It's the same thing when I try to write poetry. I recently met a talented painter with an excellent technique. I wish you two could meet. I'm sure you'd like her. I'd be glad to meet her. What is her name? Is she famous? Is she dead too? She's not famous and her name is of no importance. And yes, she is also dead. The important thing is, I hope you two get along. If she ever fancies meeting your mother, I'd be glad to welcome her into my home. Why do you say Mary is visiting you, mother? You know that's impossible. Why should it be? Are you not standing in front of me right now? Why should it be any different with your sister? But Mary really is dead, Mother. Yes, 
And are you not dead too? Isn't your father dead? And my grandson and my son-in-law, you're all gone. But you all still visit me from time to time. But I'm not dead, mother. I'm really here, talking to you, trying not to cry. Oh, it breaks my heart to have to tell you this. But of course you're dead, my darling boy. Just look at you, as pale as my Mary. Do you really see Mary and Father? Do you also see me as one of the dead? Yes. For many years it was just a game. Since your father left us without a word, I took to the habit of speaking to him. Yes, I remember. I sometimes spied on you and listened to you talking with Father in the garden. It made me so angry then. But it was just a game, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But since then, my poor dead Mary visited me in my room. She led me to her grave and there you were. I now know the dead can haunt us. I'm so sorry. You did not deserve to endure this. Mary should never have done this to you. That's true, my son. But you know what the worst part is? I liked it when Mary spoke in my head. Now she is silent, and it makes me so sad. Should I leave you alone? Just ask. And I swear you'll never hear from me again. Oh, no, Johnny. You're always welcome in this house. And one day, when I finally die, we'll all be together again. Just as Mary promised us. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. I remember Sunday... Good evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan, I can't believe my own eyes. 
Oh, it's a miracle. We all thought you were... Oh, sir, your poor sister. What a tragedy. I know, Avery. I know about my sister's murder. Miss Reed expected you to return to assist with the funeral. Right up until the last minute. Where have you been, Mr. Jonathan? We needed you here. How is my mother? Not well, I'm afraid, sir. Miss Reed is very fragile since the police brought her back home. The police? What happened? Miss Reed was found walking in the streets. She kept saying she had spoken with her son and daughter. She's resting now. Has she received appropriate medical care? I'm taking care of Miss Reed myself. Hospitals are so overwhelmed by the epidemic that they can only accept patients infected by influenza. Perhaps we could arrange a short trip. Somewhere sunny, like France. She has always been very fond of France. I think leaving London could do her good. I'm afraid Miss Reed is too frail for the moment. Recently she started going out at night without remembering it. I have to watch her carefully. What is the situation in this part of town? For a time, the West End seems spared by the epidemic. But the situation is getting much worse. Have you no relatives anywhere? I'll understand if you want to take a few days to see family. Your father managed to guarantee my earnings as long as I take care of this house, sir. My sisters are dead, and I've never met my nephews. I'll stay, sir. I'm sorry I could not be here for Mary's funeral. Your mother was strong, sir, but your support would have been appreciated. Apart from the priest and I, no one else attended your sister's funeral. To be present at the funeral with you both was my dearest wish, Avery. But I'm sorry, I simply could not attend. I would not dare to question your absence, Mr. Jonathan. All I can say is that we missed you a great deal during these difficult days. Do you know my mother speaks to the dead members of this family? Yes. I sometimes hear her speaking to you, Miss Mary, and her baby. Sometimes your father, too. So she thinks I'm also dead? And what about you? I believe she only sees her relatives as the dead she speaks to, Mr. Jonathan. It breaks my heart to see Miss Reed like that. She may get better. It's only a hypothesis, but I know my mother is strong. Whatever illusions have clouded her mind, they will fade in time. Yes. With time, Miss Reed will recover from this cursed year. I know that your return can only be beneficial to that process. Tell me the truth, Avery. Do you feel forced to stay here? Would you leave this house without the arrangement made by my father? No, sir. I have nowhere else to go. And I promised your father I'd take care of his family as long as I live. This house is dead, Avery. There is a curse on this family. You really should consider leaving. If only you could have been here sooner or more often. Maybe this house would not be that empty. But you're here now, sir. So my task is not over. You have served this family extremely well, Avery. Your support during these terrible times is much appreciated. Then I will stay. 
All I ask is that you take care of my own funeral if I die before the end of the epidemic. No mass grave, please, sir. Do you really think I don't take enough care of my mother, Avery? Yes, I do, Mr. Jonathan. You clearly have something more to say. Speak your mind, Avery. I know you work hard to help the sick, but what will you do once the epidemic is over? My home is here, and I have nowhere else to go. But this house will need some improvements if I move here. Some radical changes. That's good news. Whatever changes you have in mind, I'm sure we will find an arrangement that suits your mother also. I found an old letter written by my father and addressed to me. Do you know anything about it, Avery? Your father wanted me to give you this letter for your 35th birthday, but you left for the war and the letter remained in his office until tonight. I realize now you knew my father better than I did. Do you know why he left, Avery? Did he ever speak to you about his departure? No, sir. Mr. Reed was not exactly forthcoming. Perhaps this letter will give you the information you require. I'm currently investigating sources of the epidemic in this part of town. Do you know anything useful? Not really, except all the Macpherson's servants resigned a few days ago. They feared becoming infected, they said. The Macphersons? Where do they live? I think it's a rich house near the railway bridge in the southern part of the district. Do you need medical attention, Avery? Thank you, but I'm all right, sir. Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over my mother until I return. Of course, Mr. Jonathan, but please return as soon as possible. Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand? Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Could this be what I'm looking for?
Locked, all right. Could it be a new stage in the disease's evolution? So the husband had an affair with Doris Fletcher.
Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Mullanies... Yes? What about the Mullanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? I wonder. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Please, sir. Whether you need to buy something or not, I'm happy to help. Why are vampire hunters sniffing around here? I need to find out what they're after. Mine! This woman's body has multiple lacerations. They're deep, too. Whoever did this was driven by rage. He had his tongue removed and his eyes gouged out. He was a victim of brutal torture. This one's neck is broken. He was young. Probably the son. I was dead. 
Mr. Two, didn't you? No, I was just pretending. Doris told me I could have been a great actress. You killed your family. They mocked my talent. So, this girl took lessons at the famous Doris Fletcher acting school. Doris Fletcher seems to be the missing link here. It can't just be a coincidence. I should go to her acting school. There's an open window on the second floor. 
I should be able to get in through that. In front of you stands the tall queen. You can Can that be Doris Fletcher's voice? Where does it come from? Dead enter my realm. Are you here to worship or mock me? I'm here to put an end to the vampire epidemic, Miss Fletcher. Ah. But Doris Fletcher is no more. She was consumed by this putrid flesh that now enshrouds her. You feel anger for what happened to you. But I can help you. I'm a doctor. Doris Fletcher is no more. All that remains are the dreams of the queen she was and the queen she'll be. Until then, all shall die. For that was her final wish. Your blood will be. I summon thee. Children of the night. Ooh. Ha! 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 the disgrace of she. she was once Will she be the queen again once they all share her fate? My children! My beloved! Ha! 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 And a fade. Queen commands you. Attack! Wait. I beg. 
make you wait. What? I... I don't want to die. And I did not come to kill you, Miss Fletcher. Will you spare me then? Save this cadaverous carcass of mine. Does your heart beat a little faster now? You fancy me then, Doctor? No, Miss Fletcher. My dead heart will beat for only one. Ah! Is she pretty? Is she sweet and tender? To me, yes. Ah! I hate her already. I know. And this is partly why you must be destroyed. But you just said... That I did not come here to kill you, yes. But I realize now the threat you embody must be stopped. <gasps> Will I be remembered? Will you? You were Doris Fletcher, the greatest actress of her generation. No one can take that from you. Thank you. And farewell. Farewell. Bravo! So dramatic! I love it! McCullum! How strange I seem to find you whenever I'm inquiring about that skull infestation. I mean you no harm. I'm not here for you. But once I've put all the pieces of the puzzle together, I'm sure we'll have a little chat, you and me. Stay away from me, McCullum. You and all your war dogs. That I can't guarantee, Dr. Reed. But I'll let you go. For now. I should probably leave the theater right now. Remember your vows, friends! The West End should be safe now. But London is not. It would be wise to benefit from the Ascalon's protection while I continue my research during the Great Hunt. These people want me dead. I need to leave now. So Doris just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Very disturbing.
it, boys. He's dead! Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury. Only you can make me smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. I must admit the Guard of Prewen impressed me. They must have spent years preparing their plan. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Have a drink and enjoy this night, for it could be our last. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please, tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. I'm just a doctor. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Ekon he deserves to be. I'm sorry, but I can't. Are you questioning my orders? No. It's just... I'm not sure I'm ready to have another progeny after what happened with my sister. The rebirth of Aloysius Dawson is a necessary step in our campaign to ensure the safety of London. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right, I'm listening. Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die. And he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister.
You invited Lady Asprey. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then? Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body so deeply that some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Understandably, you have questions. Very well, proceed. Goodbye, Lord. Rumors say two cases of infection have been reported in Buckingham Palace. Good thing the king is not there. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson. To make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I won't do it. The very thought of it makes me sick. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please, tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor soul survive at all. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker, from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. 
Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful. It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sire him. I cannot enter. I need someone who can read this. It's locked, all right. I should find another way to get into the neighborhood.
I think this passage could lead me close to Aloysius Dawson's mansion. Louise's father was determined to find and save her.
Londoners are no match for me! Let it go, you bastard! <laughs> 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 Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. Do you need my help? Yes, please. Would you be kind enough to tell me what the time is? That's all you need to know. Well, is it not important to know? As important as where you are? Or who you are? I suppose you're right. And who are you then, sir? I am Agamemnon Baker. Like my brother, I think we need to leave this city immediately. And my brother and I rarely agree on anything. Do you need my medical attention, sir? I would appreciate some sunshine right now, but otherwise I'm fine. Thank you. May I ask what you're doing outside at this hour of night? I don't know. You should ask my brother instead. It was his idea in the first place. You must have your own ideas. From what I have managed to understand, I guess we're supposed to wait here. Waiting for someone to come. What can you tell me about this part of town? It's the only place I've considered myself happy. Or at least that's what I believe. Unfortunately, it's time to leave. Why is that? Because I'm not feeling happy here anymore. Are you? I still enjoy living in London. No matter how difficult it can be sometimes. Then I am sincerely happy for you. True happiness in life seems to be the most difficult goal to reach these days. May I ask why you've not gone already if you're so exasperated by this long wait? I believe fear is holding us back. My brother would have said it's laziness. 
but it's just because he's prouder than I am. What can you tell me about your brother? He's older than me, I think. But the important thing is that I really hope I'll die before him. Grief would just kill me, you know? Is that all? Pericles is very attached to this city, and without my insistence, he would never leave this place. We don't often agree on anything, you see? Who are you waiting for, exactly? The more I think about it, the more I believe it's not exactly a person we are waiting for. But what else could it be, then? I don't know. A feeling? An event? An impulse? How can I tell? Something that would allow us to leave this trap. I'm afraid I'm not following you. What kind of trap are you talking about? Have you ever felt like life trapped you in a role that does not fit you? That you're not in your place? That sort of trap. Trap? And you think leaving London will free you? At least it will give us the chance to be free. That's more than our present situation. Hope, Doctor. Hope is what truly drives mankind. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? You should ask that question to my brother instead. Personally, I've not seen Aloysius for many years. Goodbye for now, Mr. Baker. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I be of assistance? Dr. Reed? Dr. Reed? Is there anything wrong? No, it's just... Your name sounds familiar. And your face. Have we met before? I think I would remember. So I suppose the answer is no. That's odd. I'm certain I've already heard of you. My name is Pericles Baker. Does that mean anything to you? I'm afraid not, sir. But it's a pleasure to meet you anyway. Hmm. The pleasure is mine, I guess. I only wish I could remember when it was that we met. Do you need my medical attention, sir? No. I just need... I just need something that's not this. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Baker. What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? We are waiting. Waiting for someone. And why are you waiting for this person? Because we need to leave this city. As soon as possible. Why do you want to leave the city? I'm not really sure. Can you tell me anything about this district. As you like asking questions so much, would you allow me to ask you one first? Please, be my guest. Do you like this city? I know we are not living in the most peaceful of times, but I have learned to appreciate London's complexity. Yes, me too. This city tests us. It invites us to find ourselves, to discover our true nature scattered throughout its dark streets. But what if we don't like what we find? Do we ever know who we are? I wonder sometimes. Or maybe it is the journey to find out who we are that changes us. And what do you do, sir? For a living, that is. I stopped working when I decided to leave. When I realized what I wanted. I wanted something this city can't provide. But what were you doing before you took this decision? Does it really matter anymore? Considering the past seems so pointless to me. I have lived in this city all my life. And now I think it's over. Tell me more about why you want to leave London, then. I just don't belong here anymore. I had to convince my brother to leave London because I know we need to find another life out of the city. Pericles, tell me why your brother disagrees with your presence here. Agamemnon is naive sometimes. Although don't consider him a fool, sir. He is often more lucid than me. At least you both have the same difficulty explaining what you're doing, and for what reason. But is that not a common problem for all mortals? What can you tell me about your brother? If you are searching for a pleasant chat, you should speak with him instead of wasting your time with me. He has always been the more gentle of us. That's it? That's all you can tell me about him? For the time being, 
True kindness is the most valuable quality, my good sir. Who are you waiting for? I'm sure he has a name. I really can't answer that question, since I don't know that person. And why is that? This person is mostly my brother's acquaintance. I don't even know his real name. Only that this man could help us leave this city once and for all. But why would you need this person's help to leave London anyway? Well, I thought we should have left this cursed place already, but my brother convinced me to stay a while longer, and here we are. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? I've heard this is a man who has searched for his place in the world for a long time. I hope he found it. Goodbye, Mr. Baker. Hello again, Dr. Reed. Goodbye for now, Mr. Baker. 